I don't think I have to tell you that the M3 Ultra Mac Studio and the M4 Mac Mini are very different machines and one costs $10,000 while the other one costs $500. That's 20 times the difference in price. The question is though, not which one is gonna be better at software developer tasks. The question is how much better? And a surprising twist, not all software developer tasks actually are better on this. Some are better on this. Here they are in the rack, Mac Studio on top, Mac Mini on the bottom. And while they're idle, Mac Studio is using 16 watts of power while the Mac Mini is using about four. That's crazy you say, why would the little one be better at anything than the big one? Let's get that out of the way, shall we? What's this guy talking about? There's this test called Spid I'm going to kick it off right now. Boom. At the same time on both machines. And there it goes. Now, I want you to put in the comments right now what you think is going to be the winner. The Mac Studio or the Mac Mini? Go ahead. Don't be shy. And don't cheat after this is done. By the way, this is a benchmark, but I have some real world use cases as well coming up. Whoa. <laughs> Okay, here we go. The one on top is the Mac Studio and the one on the bottom is the Mac Mini. Why did the Mac Mini get a score of 50.7 and the Mac Studio 44.1? How is this even possible? And this comes back to depends what kind of workflow you're working on. This benchmark tests JavaScript capabilities in the browser. It tests a bunch of JavaScript frameworks and JavaScript is single threaded. So it's gonna be operating only on one core. And each of the M4 cores on the Mac Mini are faster than the M3 three cores on the Mac Studio. Now the Mac Studio has a lot more cores and we'll get to that momentarily. In fact, most tooling, most software developer related tooling is going to use more than one core. But sometimes when you're doing JavaScript builds or JavaScript execution or other single threaded operations, in that case, this machine that costs 20 times less is going to be just fine. Here's another test, Jetstream 2. I'm going to kick them off. And this is a JavaScript and WebAssembly test. And it says it's focused on the most advanced web applications. Wow, 530 on the Mac Mini is the final score. 478 on the Mac Studio. And we have tests like ray tracing, cryptography, coffee script, hash map, machine learning in the browser, everything, of course, Uglify, WSL. So the cumulative score is much better on the Mac Mini. Now, we often use other tools, not just run benchmarks, right? Like, I don't know, VS Code is a pretty popular editor out there. Let's pop it open in both of these. Right now, VS Code is closed. I want to see which one of these is going to open VS Code first and if it's even noticeable. So I'm going to hit enter at the same time here and boom. Okay, all right. The uh, Mac Studio opened it up a little bit faster, but does it really matter? You're going to be opening this up once in a while. We'll get to the test where it really matters in a bit, but this, not really. And I want to run for you this main.cpp. It's a C++ sorting algorithm. It's a quick sort algorithm. And this is another example of an algorithm that happens to be single core, even though this is a compiled project using C++. So they are out there. Granted, it's for toy applications, but still. Here we go. One, two, three, boom. Just to uh, show you what it's doing here, it's sorting 10 million integers. Now, if we take a look while that's executing at the memory that's being used by the system, obviously this machine, the Mac Studio has 512 gigs of RAM, unified memory. It's, <laughs> the pressure is barely anything there. This one, however, the pressure is getting up there. It's in the green, but we're using 12.85 gigabytes out of the 16 that's on board right now already. The memory used on the Mac Studio is 32. That's not because I'm have more stuff running on it. It's just because Mac OS manages memory that way. If it sees that there's a lot of free memory available, it's going to use more of it. That way applications pop up faster next time and it's ready for it. Okay. Wow. The Mac mini is done already, but we're still waiting for the Mac studio to finish. Can you believe that? That's what a generation in uh, the M chips does. So imagine if I ran this on the M1 or on the M2 or even the Intel Max. And I have videos all about that going back to Intel Max. You can check those out on the channel. So here's the final number. Two minutes and 46 seconds for that sort on the Mac Studio. Two minutes and 30 seconds on the Mac Mini. Much faster. Let's take a look at something more realistic. Many of you use Docker and there's this example voting app, which I sometimes show here. Basically, it's five containers all working together, five apps. There's a front end Python application. There's a Node application. There's a .NET worker, a Redis cache and a Postgres database all working together. And you can scale these uh, individually as well. So let's bring up this app using Docker Compose. I'm going to use the build command and the force recreate command. I've already pulled down the images, so we don't need to account for the network delay. Here we go. This is just going to recreate the containers and boom. 
Okay, five containers came up in 8.11 seconds on the Mac Studio and 8.175 seconds on the Mac Mini. Not bad for the Mac Mini, very usable. We're getting close to using a lot of that RAM that's available on the Mac Mini, but how much realistically are you going to be doing? Maybe more, maybe less. This is a test for you to see how this would work with your workflow. Let's bring down those containers. And I wanna issue another command where I scale the number of workers. That's the .NET Worker application. And let's scale that up to um, 100 running containers. So I'm gonna use this scale worker equals 100 command. This is gonna create a lot <laughs> of containers. So let's time that, let's go. There they go, creating all the containers from one to 100. Actually, there's a total of 104 containers. Okay, now we're starting to see a little bit of a difference there and check out that memory pressure on the Mac Mini. <laughs> Not even close to anything resembling memory pressure on the Mac Studio, but on that Mac Mini, we're in the orange. And because now we're hitting up against the memory wall, things are gonna start slowing down a little bit because we might be dipping into swap. That's when the operating system puts something on the SSD instead of memory, swapping it around. That's why it's called swap. Anyway, 14.75 seconds on the Mac Studio, 18.17 seconds on the Mac Mini. Now we're starting to cook. Let's take those down. Most developers are gonna be not doing this kind of scaling locally on their machines. If you are, then you might wanna get something with more memory. Not even necessarily a Mac Studio that costs $10,000, but maybe a Mac Mini Pro with a bunch more RAM, maybe 64 gigs of RAM. But chances are you're gonna be deploying somewhere else and then scaling up anyway. I'd say this is a kind of a win for the Mac Mini. I have another sorting algorithm in C++, and this one is a little bit different. This is a multi-core sorting algorithm. It happens to be merge sort my favorite sort. And this one uses all the available cores. And I'm gonna show you something crazy. This is the VAIM Rec Dot. At first glance, they're just earbuds, but long press the stem and they become your AI recorder. Meetings, calls, real world conversations, captured instantly and no app needed. Real-time transcription, automatic summaries, even translation. They're perfect for work, study, or capturing ideas on the go. With four microphones and adaptive noise cancellation, your voice stays clear, even with noise in the background. And yeah, they sound great. They're high res certified 11 millimeter drivers and 18 pro tuned sound profiles, including podcast and PUBG modes. Nine hours of listening, 36 with the case, a five minute charge, and you're back in business for a whole hour. From studio sound to AI smarts, these aren't just earbuds, they're your new workflow upgrade. Link in the description down below. So I'm gonna start this off, boom, on both machines, and check this out. Here is the Mac Mini CPU. We've got 10 cores, and this is gonna be sorting, I don't know, a few billion integers, but it's using all the cores, all the efficiency cores and all the performance cores, all 10 of them to the max. Now let's take a look at that Mac Studio. It's got 32 cores. Look at all those. And I didn't even see a blip on there because it was so fast. This one is really, really busy the Mac mini and that one is pretty much done. Now this is a kind of a contrived example of what happens if you need to push all your cores really hard doing some parallel tasks on the CPU. This is CPU only, not GPU. Also to keep all those integers in memory, that's gonna require some memory as well as I've just mentioned. So we're also gonna be running into some memory pressure issues on the 16 gigabyte Mac mini. Well, we're waiting for the Mac mini to finish. Mac Studio has been done for a while. One minute and 34 seconds for that sort. Oh, it's 1 billion integers. That's what it is. There's the algorithm right there. And two minutes and 26 seconds on the Mac mini, almost a minute longer. You can see now where the multiple cores of that M3 Ultra are really starting to shine. 32 cores on that thing. Here's a real project, an actual project that me and my team were working on for a number of years. And this is a native script application. It's actually an NX mono repo with several native script applications in there. And we typically work with Node, JavaScript, runtimes, TypeScript compilation, as well as native compilation. So this is like everything. This is a more realistic example. So I'm gonna say npm run clean all, and I also wanna time this. I'm just actually really curious because I don't think I've ever run this on the Mac Studio. Let's see. Now this is the clean command, and the clean command itself just takes a little while to execute. You can imagine how long the build command takes on this thing. Wow, this is incredible. I cannot believe that the Mac Mini might actually win. Okay, <laughs> the Mac Mini won by one second. One minute, 53 seconds for the Mac Mini, one minute, 54 seconds for the Mac Studio. And this involves 
Like I mentioned, native code compilation, as well as TypeScript transpilation, Webpack bundling. So this Mac Mini can do pretty much everything I need for this particular project. And it's not a small project. Now, what about a technology that relies a little bit more on multi-cores? All right, I'll be more specific than that. <laughs> .NET, when you build in .NET, it relies on, it spreads the work out a little bit more, builds the C-sharp, and it's probably gonna take more advantage of this Mac Studio Ultra. Let's check. I have this project called Umbraco CMS. It's a pretty popular CMS written entirely in .NET, and we're gonna build it right now. Boom, open source project, by the way, you can check it out. .NET build, well, uh, <laughs> see, Mac Mini wins because it actually builds this thing, but the Mac Studio does not. I got some errors about Image Sharp has a high severity vulnerability. Why that's happening right now? However, don't worry, I got you. I got another .NET project here, and this one I specifically wrote to create and generate over 100,000 namespaces with classes inside of them. Let's kick that off. Boom. So this is gonna require a bit of memory as well as processing on multiple threads. It's not super heavy in multi-core processing, but it'll take advantage of multiple cores if they're available. You can see here, it's a little bit sporadic on the CPU history chart, but you can see that we are using multiple cores. It's just not filling them up all the way. Here, it's doing a pretty good job because there's only 10 available. <laughs> Maybe there's just too many cores over there. I don't know. No, there they go. Something's going on on that Mac Studio though. Look, there were all in the red for that brief period of time when I started and then they went into the green and now it's probably done here it wasn't pegged at red it was gradually going up with the green so that's kind of interesting different behavior Mac Studio is done build succeeded in 71.7 seconds but we're still waiting for the Mac Mini it should be done pretty soon and the Mac Mini is done 112 seconds this is a case where it really does matter if you have a very large project and you're doing some kind of compilation .NET uh, Swift Kotlin Java things like that those are going to use multiple cores and they're going to be much faster on something with more cores this Mac Studio Studio wins this one. But is it enough? Is it enough to spend 20 times the amount of money? Probably not. You're gonna have to be the judge. Let's start up Xcode. I'm just gonna go through the creation of a hello world here. So we kind of have an idea how long things take about. And so far they're neck and neck. There's no lagging. Here we have brand new iOS project and I'm just gonna kick it off and we'll see how fast or how slow it goes. And boom, there it is, it's building. Build succeeded on the Mac Studio first, popped up that simulator, but you know what? I don't see that it was that much faster. Oh, now it is. Now it's definitely much faster. You can see the clear difference here. Mac Studio is done bringing it up in the foreground. The Mac Mini is still kind of installing it and now it's done. I guess there is a quite a significant difference here. I wasn't expecting to see this much of a difference with Xcode, but certainly if you're gonna be installing Android Studio on there, it's gonna be a much, much bigger difference. But also if you are gonna be doing anything with Android Studio, whether you're doing cross-platform development or just native development, then 16 gigabytes is probably not enough for you anymore i'd recommend 32 or 64 even because those android emulators they use a lot of memory i'm also gonna guess here based on the memory usage on the mac studio we're at 47 gigabytes now out of 512 quite a bit of a jump since we started xcode that we are doing a little bit of swapping on that mac mini and we don't really have to guess because it says it right there 5.2 gigabytes in swap whereas on the mac studio zero bytes in swap <laughs> We have a little bit of memory pressure in the orange on the Mac mini and it shows in how responsive the environment is now. So what have we learned? Well, don't buy the really, really expensive Mac Studio unless you really need it. Most developers are not gonna need all that memory unless you're doing virtual machines and a lot of them locally. If you're doing that, you probably wanna just offload to the cloud anyway. It might be cheaper. Now, there's one thing that we didn't talk about and that's local LLMs, large language models. Obviously, the Mac Studio will be able to do a much better job at running larger models. And I actually have separate videos about that. I'll leave a link to them right over here and over here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.